Many people think of bats as scary creatures, inhabitants of haunted houses, or spooky Halloween characters. So today, I want to share some real and amazing facts about these special flying mammals. My name is Jessie, and I'm a biologist and a California naturalist. Like us, bats are mammals. They have fur, three inner ear bones, and produce milk from mammary glands. This means that unlike birds which lay eggs, bats have to fly and hunt while they are pregnant with their young. Now that's impressive. While we belong to the primate order, bats make up the order Chiroptera. Derived from Greek, this name literally means hand wing. When you look at an x-ray of a bat's wing, you can see why this is a very appropriate name. The bone structure is very similar to that of our hands. Our hands and bat's wings are homologous structures, meaning that long ago, we once shared a common ancestor that had the same general bone structure. But with selective pressures and a lot of time, it adapted to two different functions, ours for grasping and manipulating objects, and theirs to support a thin membrane of skin to act as a wing for flying. Bats are the only volant mammal, which means they are capable of powered flight. And my goodness, it is impressive. Bats are also incredibly diverse. With over 1,400 described species, they make up about 20% of all mammals, second in diversity only to rodents. Bats occur on all continents except Antarctica, and range in size from large flying foxes with the wingspan of 5 feet to the bumblebee bat, which has a wingspan of 6 inches and weighs only 2 grams, less than a penny. Bats eat fruit, pollen, insects, frogs, fish, small rodents, lizards, and even other bats. And yes, it's true, there are vampire bats that really do eat blood. These species live in Central and South America and aren't nearly as scary as Dracula. All of these interactions mean that bats are a very important part of many ecosystems across the globe. Many bats are nocturnal, which means they are active at night. This often makes it difficult for us to see and get to know these fascinating creatures. So how can we learn about them? One way is for scientists to capture them using fine nets called mist nets. This allows us to actually hold a bat, measure it, collect skin and fur samples, and even put a transmitter on them to see where they fly. But as you can imagine, this process is very invasive. Fortunately, quickly evolving technology has opened up a new method for studying bats based on sound. To navigate their surroundings while flying in the dark, bats evolved a sensory system based on sound. Many bats send out a really loud call while they fly. When that sound wave hits something, like a tree or moth, it is reflected back to the bat. Just like if you yell into a canyon, you can hear the echo bounce back from the rock walls. Bats listen to these echoes, and from how loud they are and how long it takes for them to return, they can determine where things are in their environment. This process is called echolocation. Eavesdropping on these bat calls allows us to determine what species is making them. Most bats make calls that are much higher in frequency than humans can hear. Scientists have engineered special microphones that are sensitive to these sounds, and recorders that can take enough data points to record them, allowing us to listen in on bat echolocation. I'm retrieving a recorder that I placed at the Humboldt Coastal Nature Center. I set in an area that is open to the sky, where I think the bats might be active. From these data, we should be able to determine which species are using the dune habitat. I've downloaded the audio files and I'm running them through the analysis software. This process measures many different characteristics of each call and compares those parameters with a library of calls from local species. The results show that Brazilian free-tailed and hoary bats were detected in the dunes. Brazilian free-tailed bats, also known as Mexican free-tailed bats, are velvety soft and smell a little bit like corn tortillas. As their name implies, their tail extends beyond the membrane that connects their back legs. They can form massive colonies of millions of bats, like in Bracken Cave in Texas, which houses 20 million Brazilian free tails and is the largest concentration of mammals on the globe. Other famous colonies can be found under the Austin Bridge in Texas, 
and at Carlsbad Caverns in New Mexico. Brazilian free tails can fly up to 10,000 feet in altitude and feed on insects, many of which can be agricultural pests. In fact, it is thought that they get their unique smell because they eat corn borer moths, which spend their juvenile stage feeding on corn plants. The other species of bat we found at the dunes is completely different. The hoary bat is named for its frost-tipped fur. Unlike Brazilian free-tailed bats, which roost in caves and crevices in colonies, hoary bats live alone in trees. Their mottled coats are excellent camouflage among the leaves, bark, and lichens. They are fairly large bats with a body length of 5 inches and a wingspan of 15. They are distributed widely across North and South America and can migrate long distances in the fall and spring. If you want to learn more about bats, I highly recommend visiting Bat Conservation International's website. There you can read about different species, discover the many important roles bats play in ecosystems, find out about the problems that bats are facing, and get blueprints for building your very own bat box. Thank you for joining me as we've explored the wonderful world of bats. Perhaps you've discovered that they're not so scary after all.